Welcome. Welcome to our Bible study. It's good to be here together with you to learn a little bit about Jesus. Well, today we are in chapter 6 of the Gospel of Mark, and we do seven verses, not a lot, but, but uh, and you will be able to understand there's not a lot of heavy theology again today. But uh, today, Jesus is going to send his disciples out. He's going to tell them, go out, go out two by two. And what I want you to do is tell the people that you meet in the different villages to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. But first, let me, uh, let me ask you a couple questions. Did you ever go somewhere to help someone who was in need? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, I, take, uh, I take a hot meal over to somebody that's a shutting that that, that 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 that's really good maybe you used to do that all the time we say oh well, yeah you know uh i i one time i went to help out with my aunt who was pretty sick yeah yeah you know my daughter talitha in fact tomorrow is headed out to uh colorado to help out with her grandfather who is dying and she's going to go out and help make meals and she's going to go out and tend to him and, and that's, that's a really good thing. And, but sometimes I think we all do that. I think we all go somewhere to help somebody that's in need. Well, the reason I mention that is Jesus is going to send his disciples out to people who are in need. What do they need to know? They need to know the truth that they need to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever gone on a trip and forgotten something important? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know if you're like me, I almost forget something every time I take a trip. If it's not my toothbrush, it's my toothpaste. Or maybe one time Linda came up to the cabin here, she forgot her underwear of all things. And, uh, you know, we all sometimes forget to bring things when we, uh, when we go on a trip. Jesus' disciples are not going to forget today to take things. Jesus is going to say, no, you're not allowed to take anything. You're not allowed to take any money or any food or even a bag of stuff. You have to go with nothing. And I think he was trying to teach them, um, teach them dependence on God. Well, let's get into the background. Jesus is going around from town to town in the region of Galilee, in the province of Galilee. He's up in the north, in the, in the province that he was born. He's going from town to town, and what's he doing? He's going to the synagogues, and he's teaching in the synagogues on Saturday, and he's ministering to the people. And how's he ministering to the people? Well, he is healing the people, and he's teaching the people about who he is. I mean, that's what Jesus is going from town to town to town. And Jesus' fame is spreading. Because he's healing these people, everybody wants to go and see Jesus. And there's crowds following him, and uh, he's becoming a very, very famous people, not only among the peasant kind of people, but even the prominent people. They're all hearing about Jesus, and his fame is growing. Now, if you want to understand today's lesson, you need to understand what repentance means. So, repentance means to change one's mind and then to fit one's actions to the change. So for instance, say you're an alcoholic and as an alcoholic, you realize I shouldn't be drinking so much. I need to stop drinking. Well, that's changing your mind. I know I shouldn't be drinking anymore, but you've got to also follow that up with stopping drinking. You have to change your actions. So it's changing your mind and changing your actions. Or another way to put it was, is that it is a change of heart, a change of desire, and a change of action. Two parts. If you repent, you, you understand what you're doing is wrong, and you want to change your ways, and you actually have to change your ways, and that's what repentance is. Now, in the Bible, if repentance implies God's authority to set the rules. Say you're gossiping, you know, you shouldn't be gossiping. Well, God has the right to say, no, you shouldn't be gossiping, right? And when, when you repent, the first step to repentance is to imply that, I mean, this, that to acknowledge that God has the right to set the rules, and then you try to conform to those rules. And when you put, a, put aside your past and actually change your actions, then you repent. Well, let's get into the scripture. Mark 6, 7. And he, Jesus, summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. So, who are the twelve? 
the 12, and he summoned the 12. Who are the 12? They are the apostles, Peter, John, and James, and the others. That's the 12, Peter, John, James, and, and the others. And he gave them, Peter, John, and James, authority over unclean spirits, over demons. So the 12 were Jesus' apostles. Now, why did I choose this term apostle here? Back in those days, an apostle was a personal representative of the king. But not only was he personal representative of the king, he had the authority of the king. Does you understand? They were per, an apostle was a apostle was a personal representative of the king with the authority of the king. What did Jesus do? Jesus sent the 12 out. They were the apostles. They were Jesus' representatives, and they had some of Jesus' authority, namely the authority to cast out demons, unclean spirits. So they were Jesus' representatives, and they have some, had some of Jesus' authority. And they spoke to Jesus' teaching. It was his teaching that they were teaching. I want you to note, miracles were going to be part of the apostles' credentials. They're going to come out, they're going to be telling people, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's, what, that's the message they're going to be given. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And now, why would people believe them? Well, because they were doing miracles. Miracles were part of the credentials that people should listen to them. And it's very interesting to me that Jesus gave the apostles some of his power. He didn't, he didn't ask God to do it. Jesus directly gave the apostles authority over the unclean spirits. And when he did that, that is an indication that Jesus is God. Now, that's not a hard proof, but it's kind of a subtle proof, isn't it, that Jesus is God? Because he's, his ability to give to the people he wants some of his power. Um, and uh, where did I get the idea of that they were out to preach the kingdom of God is at hand? Well, in the Gospel of Matthew account, same passage, they, Matthew gives a little bit more detail. And one of the details that he gives is that Jesus told them to say the kingdom of God is at hand. So what are they preaching? They're going out from town to town preaching, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Um, by the way, to add another thing, what was John the Baptist's message? His message was the same thing. Repent. I'm preparing the way for the Messiah. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. And that's what the apostles were doing. They're going out and saying, repent. The Messiah is coming. In fact, they were able to say, we believe that we have found him. The Messiah is Jesus, the person who sent us out. Now, what do you think Jesus sent them out in pairs? What do you, what do you think he sent them out in pairs? Two by two. Well, to help each other. Sure. If you're going out with somebody else, it's a whole lot easier because you can share the burden of the things that need to be done to help each other. Uh, to bond with each other. Jesus is going to be gone in about a year or so after this, and he wanted his apostles to bond with each other. And certainly this would be a bonding experience. This would not be simple. When you go through a difficult time together with somebody, you often bond with that person. Uh, so they could learn from each other. Say Peter and John are going out together, and John says, "Oh, Peter, you know that was really cool the way you presented you presented uh, Jesus' case." And um, I, I, I've learned a thing or two from that. And 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 then Peter would say, hey, "John, you know, I learned something from you too." So they could teach each other uh, for accountability. Now you can imagine some of these apostles. They go out and uh, they have the power to heal. Well, what could they do? They could say, "Hey." You want to get healed? Give me a bunch of money. And uh, this would stop them from doing that for accountability. <laughs> and uh, Jesus didn't want them taking money uh, for, their, uh, for what they were doing. Uh, to encourage one another. Yeah, you, you go out with somebody that you, that you care about, somebody that you're bonding with, you encourage one another. Encouragement is such an important part of the Christian life. You can imagine John encouraging Peter, Peter encouraging John. To protect one another. Yeah. You know, things could be pretty dangerous back in those days. Single persons walking along alone out in the countryside. Bad guys could come. It's really hard for bad harder for bad guys if two people are going together. 
to pray for each other. Peter and John are there. Peter sees what John needs. John needs sees what Peter needs. And they talk to each other because they're becoming really close to one another. And so they pray uh, for each other. And to keep each other's company. If you've ever been on the road for any extended period of time, it gets a little bit lonely on the road. And especially if you're in a strange town, in a strange village, and, uh, and they would be able to keep each other company. Verses uh, 8 and 9. And he, Jesus, instructed them that they were to take nothing for their journey except a mere staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals. And he added, do not wear two tunics. So what did Jesus instruct his apostles? He says, hey, guys, you're going to be traveling light, really light. And not to, not to take any bread, don't take any food. Don't even take a bag. A bag would be maybe a, um, a skin of a, of a lamb that they would keep things in, maybe extra clothes or food or whatever, they, whatever possessions they were taking on a trip. And uh, don't, you weren't allowed to take that bag and you weren't allowed to take any money. But you were to wear your sandals because it's important. You got to walk a long way. You're going to need your sandals. Take your staff. It'll help you if you have to defend yourself or, or you, you can help, help you walk. And you're able to take the tunic that you're wearing, but not two tunics. So why do you think Jesus had them go with no money or no food? To teach them to trust God? Yeah, to teach them to trust God. Don't worry, God's going to take care of you, but you got to trust that he's going to take care of you to force them to accept hospitality. They were going into places where there wasn't any hotels. They would need to rely on the hospitality of others. They didn't have any food. They didn't have a place to stay. So they're going to have to rely on the hospitality of others. We're going to talk more about hospitality later. Hospitality was very important in, uh, in Israel during Jesus' days. Uh, if you don't have any food, you're fasting, and fasting helps one focus on God. And that's a true statement. I don't know if that's what Jesus was thinking, but that is a true statement. Um, uh, Jesus knew, of course Jesus knew they were going to get what they needed. Now, they didn't know that, so it was harder for them uh, than it was for Jesus, right? Because uh, Jesus knew, and he knew they were going to be protected. He knew that they were going to be safe, and he knew that, uh, that he really wanted them to, to trust God. So their job was to give and not to get. So what do you mean? Their job was to give and not to get. Well, just like I told you. If one of the apostles realizes, I have the power to heal people. I can go and I can heal people. I can make a lot of money. If somebody was, like, somebody was a healer that really healed people, they can make a lot of money in Jesus' day. And Jesus is saying, no, you're going with no money. You're going to come back with no money. You are not to use the power to, uh, uh, to, uh, for your own benefit. You use the power to help people. I think in many respects, the gospel and, and, uh, is the same today. The message is the same today. We certainly shouldn't make a large profit on the gospel. Point F, simplicity was a key. I think simplicity was a key, and I think that's important in the gospel, presenting the gospel, that you present the simple gospel, Christ crucified. And you do it simply, and uh, you, you don't make a profit from it. All right. Mark 6.10, and he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. Now, hospitality was really important in Jesus' day. It was taught to people from the very first time they went to uh, not Sunday school, but I guess Saturday school they would go to, where they were taught how important hospitality was. It was expected among the Jews. It really was expected. And they were taught that from their youngest days. See, there was no hotels in these small towns. Maybe, you know, there's towns of 300 people, 500 people, big enough for a synagogue, but not big enough for a hotel. They didn't get very many visitors. So there's no place to stay. You go into a town, you don't want to be staying outdoors. And they taught you. Strangers come into town, you take them into your home. Uh, travelers would be invited into homes. It was the custom. It was the thing to do. And hospitality was not only ex uh, encouraged, it was expected. 
it was expected. Really big thing back in Jesus' day. Why did Jesus tell them to stay in only one place? That's kind of an interesting command. You only gotta stay in one place. You can't go from place to place. You go to a town, stay in that one place. Uh, a, to get to know their host a little bit better and to get to know, to have the host get to know them, to develop a relationship with the people you're staying with. And it's easier to, um, to share the gospel with people that you have a relationship with. Uh, to give them enough time to tell them about Jesus. You know, they get to know them a little bit and say, you know, we have found the Messiah. We are following the Messiah. In fact, we are the Messiah's, um, we are the Messiah's uh, apostles. In fact, it was Jesus that gave us the power to heal people. And you all heard about Jesus. So give them enough time to tell them about Jesus, that Jesus is the, is the Messiah. Uh, so the host can actually see the reality of the healings. They're not just saying that they're able to heal people. Probably they're staying in one house and people are coming from all over to that house, bringing the sick, bringing the people they can't see, and the apostles are healing them. And it becomes very real for the hosts, the people that are hosting them. Uh, so they wouldn't stuff, uh, find top, so they wouldn't spend time shopping for a better situation. You can't even imagine. People come into town, they start healing people. And they're staying at somebody's house that's relatively poor. Well, the rich people in the town might come, well, come on, stay with us. I can give you your room. I can give you better meals. No, Jesus said, you're not going to spend your time trying to figure out the best place to stay. Stay in the place that first welcomed you in. Verse 11. Any place that does not receive you or listen to you, go out from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet as a testimony against them. It says, any place that does not receive you, doesn't give you hospitality, or listen to you, listen to their message, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, as you go out from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet as a testimony against them. You say, right, what is it? Shake the dust off you. It's a special dance Jesus was teaching them. No, it wasn't as, but you can imagine the, the, the shake your dust off your feet dance. But actually, this was a very serious thing Jesus was saying. In fact, this was some of the strongest words we see Jesus use. Very, very, very strong words. But you know, you, you got to get some of the background to understand why it's strong words. You see, shaking the dust off your feet was symbolic. See, when a Jew left Israel and went to a foreign country, into a Gentile country, a place where there's no Jews, into a place where there was idols all over the place and lots of immorality into ungodless places, they, when they returned to Israel, as they crossed the border, they, from another region, from a Gentile region, they would shake the dust off their feet as a symbol of two things. Number one is a symbol of leaving a godless place. I'm back in my own country, a place where God is, God's own, own nation. And uh, I'm leaving that miserable godless place. Furthermore, leaving godlessness in that place. Not only leaving the God, but leaving godless. I'm leaving every bit of godliness in that place. I'm sh shaking the dust off my feet. Jesus says, shake the dust off your feet for those who refuse hospitality. He said, it's a really bad thing to refuse hospitality. You're refusing hospitality to my representatives. You're refusing hospitality to me because you're refusing the hospitality to my representatives. This is a very bad thing to do. Shake the dust off your feet. Furthermore, those who refuse to listen, they're like godless people. That's kind of what Jesus is saying. Those who refuse to listen, are like godless people. Uh, those who reject Jesus, it's like rejecting God. It's like rejecting. So you, you, you can see the symbolism. You can see the symbolism here. Furthermore, I don't have it written down here, but people also believe that, uh, that Jesus was telling them it's not your fault if people don't believe. You just shake the dust off your feet and you go on to the next thing. You don't have to worry about it. If they don't believe, it's not your fault. You're not responsible for somebody else believing. And uh, you know, I want to summarize this. It is a serious matter to reject Jesus or his representatives. It's a really serious matter. And that's what Jesus is getting at. This is a serious matter. 
one who rejects Jesus, in fact, rejects the truth. Shake your dust off the feet for those people that reject the truth. Furthermore, one who rejects Jesus rejects God. Shake the, shake the dust off your feet and embraces godliness. Furthermore, one who rejects Jesus invites judgment. So it's a very, very serious thing. And that's what Jesus is getting to the seriousness of that. <sighs> Last verse for today. Mark 6, 12. And they, who? The apostles, the 12, went out and preached that people are to repent. That's not the last verse today. There's two more verses. So they went out and preached that people are to repent. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, if you remember the definition of repentance, realize you're doing wrong, decide you're going to change, and thirdly, to actually make a change and stop doing that. The first step to believing in Jesus is that you acknowledge your need for a Savior. That's what this repentance has to do with. I, I, I know I'm sinning against God. I need help. And that's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus went and died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins. It's the first step in, in believing. And I wonder, I wonder, you know, the, the uh, apostles went out and talked to a lot of people. I wonder whether those people that they talked to, that heard their message of repentance, that the kingdom of God is at hand, later when Jesus rose from the dead, I wonder if they became some of the, some of the earliest Christians. A lot of people in Galilee became Christians. A lot, a lot, a lot. A lot of the people followed Jesus. Maybe when the apostles went into town and they, they healed some people and they started, started being very curious about Jesus, maybe they went and found Jesus and they, maybe they traveled around with Jesus. I don't know. Maybe some of these people became the very earliest of the Christians in their very early church. Now the last verse. And they were casting out many demons. Who? Oh, the apostles. They were casting out many demons and, went, and anointing with oil many sick people and healing them. So what did the apostles do? Well, they cast out many demons and they healed many people. So why did Jesus give the apostles the ability to perform miracles? Why was that the key? I mean, that, that's, that's the, you know, Mark, that was a really key thing that he gave him. Gave him. So you're going to go out, teach him to repent the kingdom of God is at hand. And by the way, you're going to be able to do these miracles. Well, it gave them credibility. People say, wow, these guys can do miracles. These people, they, they, they healed that blind person. I know the guy's been blind since birth. He, they, they healed him. Well, I'm going to listen to what they have to say. It gave them credibility. It associated them with Jesus. Everybody knew in those days. The, the rumors were all over the place that Jesus was healing people. And when they came into town, they said, we are Jesus' apostles. And they were healing people. So it had associated the apostles with Jesus. It showed them that truly these were his representatives, his apostles. Uh, as a testimony that their, that their message was true. If I was able to come in to your facility, if you're in a facility, and I started healing people, and I started, t started telling you things, you'd probably listen pretty close to the things I was telling you. And also, I think, it was to show Jesus' compassion for those in need. I mean, could you imagine being a blind person in those days? I mean, you were, you were really in tough straits. I mean, it may be tough to be blind today, but back then it was horrific. And you'd give somebody their life back if you cured their blindness. Or if you were a leper, you had to be in a leper call. I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm unclean. Stay away from me. You'd give, you'd give the people their life back. They'd go back and return to their family and so forth. And that's the kind of things that Jesus' healings did. And by this, through this, Jesus showed compassion on those that are in need. Which is a good example for us. We should always show compassion on those who are in need. All right, so here's my summary. Jesus sent the apostles to preach in the towns of Galilee. They were to travel light, no food, no, no, uh, no uh, money. And he gave them power over unclean spirits. They preached, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. They cast out demons and healed the sick. And uh, it is a serious matter to reject Jesus. 
And finally, I believe some of those became the first Christians. Not the very first Christians, the apostles were the first Christians, but the, the first Christians uh, after Jesus rose from the dead, I believe many of these became Christians and believed are in heaven today. And maybe this was the first step. Sometimes being saved takes several steps. Well, if you've been watching these videos, you know that I'm asking every one of you, every one of you is to play, th pray three prayers every day. First, please pray for salvation for those in your residence. If you're in a residence, all the, all the other residents and the staff, if you're at home, uh, in, 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 you're at home, pray for everybody in your family to, to hear about Jesus and be saved. Pray for the doctors and everybody that you come in contact with. Please pray for that. Second of all, we're asking everybody to pray for an end to racism in the United States that has no place in Jesus' church. It has no place in this great country of ours. Please pray against racism. Pray for an end to racism. Furthermore, we're asking everybody to pray every day for protection from the virus. The virus is still raging out there. Please pray that your facility and your household would be protected from the virus. Now, I'm going to add, I'm going to start adding, I'm going to add one next time we do a study. And what I want you to pray for is unity in our country. But we'll get into that in the, in the next country. Well, our country really needs to be united. And uh, the way to do that is to pray to God. And now, there's only one thing left to say. Say it with me. Aloha. See you there. God bless you all. Thank you very much for watching. And have a great rest of your day.